Hello, I'm David Hume. History is all around, as is evidenced by this memorial to General Sir James Steele on Valley Carey's Amenity Green, telling the story of a very distinguished army officer who was born and grew up in this community. But what is history? History is objects, it's books, photographs, memories. And in this short film, we want to explore objects that people have and the story that those objects actually tell and the memories that they provoke. I've got a book. Not a desperately old or unique or special book in any way. Chambers' Miscellany of Useful and Entertaining Traps, published in Edinburgh 1845. What makes it remotely of interest to us is what it says on the flyleaf. Two things. William Thompson, Ballycarry. I confess I don't know exactly who William Thompson is, but also Ballycarry Reading Society, number 25. Libraries are a fairly modern thing. Uh, that you can go into a municipal library and lick a book off the shelf or order a book or all of that. That didn't happen. Uh, so in the late 18th century, in many parts of Ulster, people began to establish reading societies. They contributed small sums of money, pennies or shillings even, and bought books with those which were available on loan to the members of the society. It was a way of advancing their education, also providing education uh, uh, and entertainment and knowledge. It also had an impact upon politics. Uh, it was often thought that the United Irishmen grew out of an interest in reading and political dispute and these things all connected together uh, and the powers that be thought this was very bad. Uh, a major reading society at the time was in the village of Doak and it was destroyed by the Yeomanry in 1797, literally destroyed, uh, because these books were no good and they were teaching people bad ideas and making them disloyal and so on. Anyway, the idea of the books took root. Ballycarry had its own reading society from the end of the 18th century. James Orr, the poet, of whom we'll hear and on, uh, was involved in that. And this was their way of increasing their knowledge and of sharing with each other. Many a winter's evening was spent. How they managed, I don't entirely know, because like many books of the period, the typeface was really small. It must have been a challenge to read these things. But read they did, and that was the mark of someone who was educated and forward and able to, to study and discuss and know all sorts of things. The Reading Society was an important part of the intellectual life of the community. Long tradition, and I'm delighted that a handful of the books still survive, and a little note on the flyleaf reminds us of what it was and where it came from. <laughs>